From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, neonatal abstinence syndrome. Neonatal abstinence syndrome is basically, let me put it simply, you got a mom, a pregnant woman came to you. She was on drugs throughout the pregnancy, like opium, like morphine or methadone or heroin. Now she gave birth to a baby and you got this newborn baby in your hands and this baby is going through withdrawal effects from the opium because she got the opium from the mother in utero now after delivery the baby is developing the withdrawal symptoms so basically that is neonatal abstinence syndrome it is growing I mean it's tragic because so many women are using drugs even during pregnancy the most commonly abused drugs are morphine and methadone in the general population. Heroin is the most commonly abused opioid. Remember that heroin is the most commonly abused opioid. And uh, when it goes to the baby, the baby will develop these withdrawal symptoms. That's called it neonatal abstinence syndrome. For addicted pregnant women, Many times we give methadone for heroin withdrawal, right? Like uh, in, if, and the patient is in rehabilitation, we give methadone. So when these mothers are in methadone, that passes into the baby and the baby develops uh, methadone withdrawal. So any of these things can cause. So you got the newborn baby and uh, examine the baby. Any CNS symptoms like uh, irritability, hypertonicity, or high-pitched fever, uh, or sorry, high-pitched cry, or increased the anning or the sneezing, and uh, examine the skin for any skin excoriation. And uh, in addition, they are more likely to have uh, benign neoclonal sleep myoclonus. So uh, in the sleep, they get myoclonus. Look for GI symptoms like uh, how are they feeding? Many times they will have poor feeding and uh, constant sucking, vomitings and regurgitation. They will have watery stools and dehydration. So those are the symptoms and autonomic signs like uh, increased sweating, nasal stuffiness, fever, temperature instability. So see for CNS symptoms, GI symptoms and autonomic symptoms in these ba babies. So the withdrawal from heroin is usually apparent within 48 hours after the birth. So the heroin within 48 hours. When the mother is on methadone, you see between 48 and 72 hours after the birth. But that's not a rule. In many ba many babies, you see as uh, these withdrawal effects as long as four weeks after the birth. Now diagnosis. How do you diagnose this condition? Again, whenever you see the baby, you go to see a newborn baby, you examine the baby and uh, if you see any signs and symptoms suggestive of opioid withdrawal, you should always check the drug toxic screen. That is, take the meconium or the urine and check for the drugs. And the meconium is more sensitive than urine. So take, if, if there is meconium available, take the meconium and send it for urine urine drug tox screening. So because it is more sensitive, that's an important point to note. Now, so you, you, you first see for clinical symptoms and signs and then you test it objectively in urine or meconium. Now how do you manage these babies? Now you got the baby and uh, the management is you try to do the neonatal abstinence screening. There is a one widely used screening is Finnegan's screening. So in Finnegan's screening you take, 
as I said, it will have GI symptoms, CNA symptoms, autonomic symptoms listed. You don't have to remember it, but yeah, in scoring, you will give numbers and you take the total score. And based on that score, you treat the babies. And if the score is low, you will just give supportive treatment like uh, keeping the baby in a calm, cool room and decreasing the sensory stimuli, swaddling the baby and uh, giving uh, like uh, high dose, high calories. You see in normal babies we give 20 calories per ounce. In these babies we give like 24, 25 ounces per, uh, 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 sorry, uh, 24, 25 calories per ounce. That kind of uh, 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 strength we need to give because the metabolic uh, needs increase in these babies. So that is when the baby has the low score and the score is high like more than 8 on 2 or 3 consecutive uh, scorings then you go for uh, treatment, the pharmacological treatment. The pharmacological treatment you can give the opioids like morphine, morphine by mouth most commonly and uh, uh, there is, it comes in different forms like tincture of uh, uh, opium or uh, you can give a methadone, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. So look for uh, what the mummy is taking and go accordingly. And then record how this baby is improving on oral morphine or uh, parental morphine. And you can also, uh, uh, when the baby has to sleep, you can use phenobarbital because that's a sedative agent and it is helpful to put the baby to sleep. And there are other drugs like uh, clonidine clonidine or chlorpromazine, that is Librium. These medications also help as adjunctive agents, but morphine is the most important drug. So you treat the baby whenever there is the, this high score, and you monitor how the baby is responding. How are the CNS signs? How are the GI signs? And how are the autonomic signs? How the baby is uh, increasing? Because the idea is not to give them these uh, medications because that increases the days of uh, stay in the hospital. So whenever there is uh, symptoms like uh, seizures and uh, uh, weight loss, then immediately start them on uh, um, these uh, uh, opioids. That's uh, an important part of the treatment. And whenever the babies are vomiting or whenever there is this hypovolemia, then always go for uh, opioid symptoms. Opioid therapy should be used in infants so despite supportive care whenever you see these symptoms. Otherwise, the mortality rate is high. If a sedative agent is required, then go for phenobarbital. And uh, if, if there is more need for other things, like uh, go for clonidine or chlorpromazine. And because these medications help, there is no objective criteria, but these medications help in controlling these symptoms. So there are no controlled studies comparing the different forms of opioid therapy, but you can use any f different forms. As I said, tincture of opium, you can use it in uh, some hospitals, they use tincture of opium. In some hospitals, they use morphine by mouth or by parental injections, it doesn't matter. And in some hospitals, we use methadone adjunct therapy that also helps in many of these uh, patients. But the idea is you should always treat them objectively and uh, reduce the mortality rate. You go by neonatal abstinence scoring system, NAS Finnegan score, and the sco whenever the score is less, go by supportive therapy. Whenever the score is high, go by pharmacological therapy with uh, morphine or clonidine. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.
www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.